good afternoon, everybody. Today is November the 4th, 2020. I am uh, glad to redo this video on teaching a dog not to pull. Um, busy week, busy week with some very good clients. I learned a lot this last week. So I'm gonna, I wanna thank everybody for coming back. Um, man, I, this is probably the number one thing that I get asked to teach. Now, remember, I talked about different temperaments of dogs. So the reason why I do that, because that's gonna determine what method of training I'm gonna use to teach him not to pull. I can't, I can't be married to just one method. You just can't be that way because there's different temperaments of dogs. I'll take it a step further. You can't even, you can't even go to the temperament sometimes. Maybe you have somebody with a disability that needs a different method because of the dog that they have. Okay. So that's why it's important to have different variety of methods of training. So let's go first. The first question I always get asked, Hector, why do dogs pull? Well, it's pretty easy. Dogs lead with instinct. They do not lead with training, right? So as soon as you put something on their neck and chest, their instinct isn't to just not pull. There is, in most cases, some dogs instinct is to resist that, is to pull. As soon as they feel something on their neck and chest, they wanna pull right away. So I hope that makes sense, people. That's why, that's why you have to teach a dog not to pull. Now, do you have to teach all dogs not to pull? Absolutely not. You have your, um, your meat temperament, your fearful dogs, your shy dogs, and, and some, and some of your companion dogs temperaments. Those dogs don't need, they don't even need uh, something around their neck. They won't pull. My dog Malo and my dog um, Amigo, both of them, they didn't pull very much when they were puppies. I felt, they felt a little resistance on their neck and they stopped right away. So would I have then put a pinch collar on them? Hell no. Would I have then put a choke chain? Hell no. You don't need to do that with all dogs. As a trainer though, I try to find a dog where I don't need to use those methods. Okay, especially as a man, I don't wanna use those methods. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, you guys. Uh, Patty, thanks for watching. Lisa, thank you. I seen you on here, Joe. Uh, I'm glad you're watching, Joe. Um, I, wish, I wish I would've had it last week, but I'm hoping your dog will still be good for this. Uh, Jesse Holman, thanks for watching. Cindy, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Sherry, thanks for watching, coming back. Lisa, thanks for coming back. Ellen Whipple, you got some good dog sense, Ellen. Ask some good questions if you have them. I know you don't think so, but with your golden retriever, you asked probably some really good questions when I did a house call for you. I don't think I don't, don't, think I don't forget. Uh, Madison Barr, thank you. And say hi to Chandler for me, will you? Uh, Danielle, thanks for watching. April, beautiful baby you have. Thank you for watching. Uh, Brandy, again, thank you. Gay, thanks for coming back. So, uh, Stephanie Taylor, I'm great to see you too. Um, I was in Indiana and then they canceled again. So I'll let you know when I'm back in Indiana again so we can meet, meet with you and your husband again. So uh, anyways, we're gonna get started here on training dogs not to pull. Now, there's no reason that you can't ask a question while I'm talking today. This is kind of a back and forth. It could be a back and, th and forth thing. Here's why. I don't want you to wait towards the end if it pertains to the subject right now. So if you have a question, I'm gonna bounce back and forth to make sure that we get this. Uh, Kelly Klein, we need this. Cash is starting to pull with the halter. Okay, if that's the case, uh, Kelly, then you need to do more off-leash. You need to do more off-leash and less head halter. Okay, you need to do more off-leash and less head halter. If that doesn't work, then most likely you're going to need to decompress his neck and shoulders. Okay, very important. I got a dog yesterday. Tiffany brought me a dog yesterday from the Grand Rapids area, a German Shepherd about a year and a half old. I wish I had time to make a video and play it for you guys. I had a pinch collar on. The trainers before her were just yanking the hell out of the dog and yanking hard. I mean, really? What do you expect the dog to do when he's getting yanked? Really, you supposed to, you, do you think he's just supposed to take it? No, their body is conditioned that when they feel that to resist it. So they tighten up. So when they're walking, they're tightened up. 
We had to do completely off leash with this dog and then put the head halter on. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, th the same day, uh, the week before, I had somebody very heavy handed with their, with their dog. And they thought that the harder you get, the more, the more resi uh, less resistance you're going to get with a dog. That's a bunch of bull crap, you guys. Force doesn't give you submission. Force gets you forced back. Come on, if, if, if us men haven't learned that by now, where are we, where are we going? I, I talked to some trainers who've been training longer than I have, but they haven't evolved. They've stayed where they're at. It is imperative to keep moving, to keep learning, not just from the dogs, but from the people that you get. Listen to their question. Listen to what they have to say. A lot of the stuff that they say makes a lot of sense. You don't know everything. And you really got to set that in your brain. Uh, gay, when an older person is... Is very uh, little balance with their dogs pull. Exactly. I think, Gay, I think you referred me to somebody who, who had that issue. And we ended up doing off leash and then the head halter. And then the head halter. Golden retrievers don't have don't have a lot of they can they have a lot of pain. They can take a lot of pain. Go ahead and jerk the heck out of them. They don't care. And same with these labs, they don't care. Why do they have good nerves? To take a muzzle blast to the ear. So understand that's that's why you don't want to go right to force. Uh, Marcy, thank you for watching. Uh, Emily, let's see. You're looking forward to for tonight for Dexter and Lenny. Yes, Emily, absolutely. Uh, Gay, yes. Okay, I, re I I do remember that. Barbara, thanks for watching. So understand that you want to get to one. You want to get to something. You don't want to use always a collar on a dog's neck. All right, let's, let me give you an example. A strong-willed dog, as soon as something goes on his neck, his brain tells him, let me resist that. Let me, let me take risk. Let me take risk to see if I'm, if, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be corrected again. And you're just gonna go harder and harder. You see this with sport dogs. Their neck is really tight, and, and then, they, then they bite, and then they, they, then they expect them to release. That's crazy. So what we're going to do today is teach you to go from one thing to another, which means if you have to go to a nylon choke chain to start with, then we're going to go to a head halter to finish. Now, why do I use a head halter? I had a trainer tell me this looks wimpy. I said, let go of your ego because it's got me in more trouble than you can think. And it's about time that you learn from somebody who's already been there. So the head halter is designed to teach the dog not to pull through habit, through habit, not through correction, through habit. It's designed to teach a dog not to pull through habit. Remember that. Now, if the dog is pulling, like uh, Kelly said, if the dog is pulling on the head halter, then it's working against you because now you're causing stress around the neck and you don't want to do that. So then you got to go to more off leash. Even if you, even if it resists you taking the dog for a walk, you're going to do more off leash. Now, teaching a dog not to pull. I want you to understand that walking's great for a dog. Walking's great for you, but please don't use walking as a means of getting your dog tired. Why? Because it doesn't appease their instinct. It doesn't appease their instinct. Let me make one variable to that. There are certain dogs who do like to walk a lot, which would be your huskies and your hounds, okay? But even then, even then, they need their instinct appeased, okay? So it's very important to understand that, yes, it's good to walk your dog as a means of managing and control your dog from one place to another, or maybe you wanna get out and do some exercise. There's nothing wrong with that but don't use that as a means of exercising your dog, okay? Very, very important. Uh, I think you told us it won't work on a pudge. Okay, you're right. Now, I haven't gone to that yet, Patty. A pudge and flat-nosed dogs, those are different. If you use a head halter, it won't fit. It won't fit because their nose is so flat. A boxer, some boxers, mastiffs, um, some pit bulls. You're right, it won't work. So then I go to a different collar. Now, this collar looks medieval, but trust me, if you put a choke chain or a nylon choke chain on the flat nosed dogs, you're gonna get two things. You're gonna get blood vessels that pop around their eye, and you're gonna get breathing. 
Now, some trainers say, well, put a harness on him then. Well, they're pulling. They're not healing then. So it's working against you. Now you're saying, well, why not an anti-pull harness? You can use an anti-pull harness on a certain temperament of dog that you have. 99% of the dogs that I get in my facility, they don't have an anti-pull harness. They or they had one and they got a lot of stress around their back and shoulders. Now I got to massage him before I even start training. And now the dogs are in pain. The, the, the harness, and I'll show you a good one. I'll show you one right now. Um, the harness, this is the one that Joey's Outfitters has. Uh, Mark, Mark sent me this video. This one works really, really good. So it goes, it's a thunder leash. It goes around their chest and up behind, just like you showed there. That one seems to work really well with some dogs. A thunder leash, no pull. Mark, Mark seems to really like this a lot. I am not that qualified in putting a lot of uh, anti-pull harnesses on dogs because the dogs that I get, I end up taking them off because they're not working. Remember, the dogs that I get, most of the time, and you guys can contest to this, is that some of the times, these guys already gone to three or four classes or maybe uh, three or four trainers. I had one last week who went to nine trainers decided to come to me. And I said, well, what took you so long? Well, Hector, all the, all the trainers told me not to come to you. I'm like, oh, and now where are, you, where are you ending up with me? And look at where dog is completely off lead. All right, this is why I put videos on my, on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook. All right, yes, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be some competition, but look at what I have, look what I've done. Uh, let's see, Jesse, that's the color that we use for bogey and the French Bulldog, works amazing. Thank you for that, uh, thank you for that, Jesse. I appreciate that qualification for that. Um, so, very, very important, you guys. Uh, star mark for flat-nosed dogs and or, and or dogs who pull a lot. This is not something you want to be dependent on. This is something just to get the dog not to pull, and that's it. And that's it. So as soon as you're done pulling, then you go to the head halter, okay? We still got to talk about how dogs, how dogs uh, actually learn and everything. So... And then you have your walk and train. Now, why do I choose the walk and train? I choose the walk and train because if you notice with this collar, let me go this way here, it corrects at the bottom of the dog's muzzle. Some of the other ones that I can't name will go to the side and then the dog's pulling sideways. You want the correction to be towards the bottom. So if it comes towards the bottom, their head goes down. And this, they fight it a little bit because they're resisting and something around their head. And there's a learning curve behind everything that you use, people. There's a learning curve. It's not just you put it on, the dog's going to learn. No, you put it on and then you go with it. You, you teach them. My dog, my, um, my dog, Amigo and Milo both needed a, a, a um, oh my goodness, a uh, martingale, a <laughs> martingale. A martingale is just a nylon collar. Some have a chain on here and some have a nylon one. That's all they needed. They won't pull. But here's the thing that I did with both of my dogs. I did off leash first, then I went to the martingale, okay? Now, some dogs need a nylon choke chain. What I'm not gonna show you is a metal choke chain and a metal pinch collar. Those cause more issues than you could ever imagine. If your trainer's using those and being dependent on those, those trainers are outdated with their training methods. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell them too. They're outdated with their training methods. Come on now. When are, you gonna, when are you gonna evolve? This is why I use a nylon choke chain because you don't hear any noise. It's a silent correction. This is why I use the star mark. It's a silent correction. They don't hear it. Why don't you want any noise next to their neck, which is their ear? Because they anticipate the noise and still get a phantom correction, even with a choke chain. So I don't. I want the correction to be silent. I want the correction to be silent. I don't want a dog that has PTSD. I don't want a dog who who anticipates a correction and then tightens up. All right. I want them nice and calm. Uh, Janet, thanks for watching. Uh, let's see here. How do you teach a dog to walk off leash? That's going to be my off leash class um, that I'm going to have on here 
um, Ellen. However, with your puppy that you have, Ellen, start with treats. Start with treats, Ellen. Uh, let's see here. Start with treats. Start with the dog right next to you, giving him treats, showing him the treats. That alone can teach a sensitive dog not to pull. That alone. And then you take the leash off, and then you have them walk next to you off lead like that. They're going to be looking up at you. And then you want to go to the head halter. You can even use treats with the head halter, Ellen, to teach them not to pull. If you, if you use a correction on a sensitive dog, watch out. If you use a correction on a sensitive dog, watch out. You're going to break them. You don't want to break a sensitive dog with a correction. Not even with this. Not even with, with, with just not even yelling at them. Use treats to get them to not pull. And then go to the head halter to manage him when there's variables out there. Other dogs, other people, things like that. So you can use treats on a sensitive, meek, and maybe companion. I say maybe companion because some companions, they, they fluctuate sometimes. They'll test you a little bit. So treats, Ellen, for or treats to get them to stop pulling for a sensitive, meek, even a fearful dog. Use the martingale or treats to get him to stop. That's a martingale on my dog that I just had. Then, then if I'm having issues in the face of distractions, then I go to the head halter, all right? Treats, martingale or nylon, and then head halter on a meek, sensitive dog, fearful even. Now, why don't I put a harness on a fearful dog? Remember, if it's fearful or shy, it walks up to something, it's gonna back away from it. I don't want the dog to back away from something it's afraid. I want the dog to challenge itself and learn that it's not, it doesn't need to be afraid of certain environments. So then you don't want to have that type of collar on. All right, let, uh, let me see here. Uh, Marcy asked me, I have a Texas healer who only pulls on the way back from the walks and runs. No, no pull collar harness from the front neck works okay. Maybe Mosul one is better. Yeah, Marcy, I would try that. I'll even do this, Marcy. If you, if you don't uh, uh, get the dog acclimated to the head halter, Marcy, continue to use the, the harness with that corrects in the front or anti-pull from the front and then use the head halter on the way home. All right? So there's nothing wrong with doing that, going back and forth. You're just teaching him a different habit. That's okay. He's, he's excited to go home. But that excitement while he's pulling on the harness can also accumulate stress around his neck and back and his hind back and his, where his abdomen his last rib is. Remember, this is why I massage dogs a lot because they pull so much. I can't train a dog off leash until, until they're relaxed. Very important. Uh, Michael Butts, thanks for watching. Mike, that, that, uh, that picture you sent me is something else. I appreciate it. That was funny. Uh, Renee Horton, thanks for watching. You're welcome, Renee. You're welcome. Uh, let me go back in here. How do you teach a dog? Okay, that was your uh, Teresa Lynn. Thank you for watching. Uh, let's see here. Jesse Holman. Uh, that's the color we use for. Okay, good, good, good. I just want to make sure I don't I don't uh, miss anybody's question here. Uh, Lisa Rabson, thank you for watching. Uh, so, anyways, remember go back in my temperament video. My, re my replay and see what temperament of dog you have and then let me qualify it with what you're going to use. Now, we talked about meek dogs, shy dogs, fearful dogs, and some companion dogs. You can use the treat method to get them to stop pulling, then go to a martingale or a nylon choke chain. Now, the caveat with the nylon choke chain, make sure their trachea doesn't stick over their muscles around their neck. A lot of dogs, their muscles protect the trachea. They're by design, that's how they are. However, take a second to feel if the trachea is over the muscles, do not use this. You will cut their trachea, don't use it. You're gonna be putting it up over their Adam's apple behind their ears, but you still don't wanna use this, you'll cut them. So then what you do, if it's a low temperament or medium, you go to a martingale, you teach them not to pull with treats, then you go to the head halter to teach them not to pull through habit, through habit, all right? And then remember, walking only does what? Only, it, it may get them tired, but not fulfill them, not fulfill their instinct. 
Now, let's go to the strong will dogs. Strong will dogs. Uh, let, me, let me answer this question here. Yasha, I hope your dog's doing good. I do, I, how can I not forget Loki? Uh, Loki does pretty well off leash, but still tries to pull with the gentle lead. Um, do more off leash, uh, Yasha. You have, you have a very, very strong will, very highly intelligent dog with good instincts. So do more off leash and more playing with the ball. And, and then as he gets older, as he gets older, he'll do less pulling. This is why they pull. I'll give you uh, some good evidence on why they pull. All right. Uh, give me one question. Let me give me. Hold on a second. I'm going to I'm going to answer Ann's. George is a new dog, Hector. He hardly noticed on. Good. And this is why I wanted to make sure I read yours. But we hardly use them. Uh, very good. I, I got bean bags, but we hardly use them. Very good. And you don't want to be married to any collar or anything that you use. You want to rely on your voice. I'm so glad you gave me that update. I love that dog. Uh, not sure if Cash is timid or a companion. Um, Kelly Klein, he's companion, but he could easily go to being strong-willed if you don't follow through. Here's why. Here's why. Let me qualify this. Dogs, this is why I use a star mark, okay? They look medieval. But remember, your goal is to teach them not to pull first with this, then go to the head halter. You do not want to be married to this. This is just a means to an end for pulling, okay? Now, if you notice, this has uh, all the way around the neck, it corrects them. If you use a choke chain or a nylon, you'll hurt them. You don't want to do that. So by putting this on, you teach them not to pull. You put this over their Adam's apple behind their ears. Now, pay attention. This is why I use this for strong-willed dogs or dominant dogs, okay? Their brain... Their brain is designed to take risk. When you put anything around their neck, they're gonna resist it. Their brain just tells them to resist. This is why you wanna put it up over their Adam's apple behind their ears. When they're walking, they self-correct themselves. You do not jerk. You do not jerk. If anybody tells you to jerk, they're a jerk. <laughs> In essence, because you don't need the jerk. All you need to do is put it up here high and the dog self teaches itself. When it pulls, it corrects itself. If you add the correction, you're gonna add a battle of wills. Now you have a fight. Don't do that. This is where men's ego kicks in. They give a little correction, the dog fights, and they correct harder. We have to resist that as men to not correct. This, this anti-pulling is just designed to teach a dog don't forge ahead but their brain tells them to do it anyways because there's something around their neck they're just designed that way so all you're gonna do is put it up high give me a second here all you're gonna do is put it like I did with this dog it's gonna go over the Adam's apple behind the ear we teach the dog on its own not to pull on its own you're not pulling so then and then I do off leash with this dog and then we go to the head halter. But we have to teach the dog not to pull first over the Adam's apple behind the ears. All right, I had my dog there barking as a distraction so I can test that the dog's not pulling. All right, so it's very important to design ours. Even that was a little bit too much of a jerk, right? We don't need any of that. And then I go to off leash. I'll do an off leash class sooner or later. Then I do off leash, and then we go to the head halter. So we, but you don't need to do off leash. We need to do off leash for this dog for several other reasons. And then we go to the head halter. Then we go to the head halter. The head halter through habit teaches them not to pull. You see, I'm not married to the star mark. I'm not married to the star mark. I'm not married to the head halter. I want to do off leash. Your ultimate goal is nothing on their neck. Now. Why is it that some dogs continually need correction with the star mark or with a pinch collar, or for that matter, a choke chain? Why is it that they need it? If you have a strong-willed dog or a dominant dog and you start using methods that go around their neck, their brain tells them to take risk. So you correct them and then they're like, am I gonna get corrected again? I'm gonna take a risk. Boom, you correct them again. And then that becomes what? A battle of wills. You don't want a battle of wills, people. 
You don't want that. Uh, let me see. Debbie. Hi, Hector. Sunny is uh, responding very well to your method. She's doing amazing. I'm glad. You're, if you're hiking on trails, Debbie, that's awesome because that's appeasing her instincts. Uh, right by me, no pulling. That's exactly what I want to hear, Debbie. Um, that, what, what, I, what I like is I like the feedback from the people who have trained with me so they can qualify that what I'm saying works, damn it. It works. I'm not just giving you not unsound advice. I'm not just giving you un, un, uh, un, unproven methods. It's not, an, it's not an experiment. It's not a thought experiment. This is empirical knowledge over and over doing it. So it's very important. Uh, Sherry here. Uh, that's what you had me with Nala. So I shouldn't use this while I go for walks and I should be, you should be using the head halter. Yes, she is strong willed, Sherry. So if you put a head halter on her, excuse me, a star mark, she's gonna take risk of getting jerked. Their body tightens up and they take risk. This is why you, you can be married to that pinch collar and that uh, star mark. You gotta go right from them not pulling right to the other one. Very, very important. Very important. Let me show you uh, Closer, a dog closer, that I use. Closer, so closer. They have yep. a nylon Don't flat keep it collar. tight. Just taunt. Then, there. This now is keep Rochelle's them close dog. to you. Boy, Bring them back dog close to you. Amazing. All right. Oh, you don't have an impulse me, uh, issue. Fantastic. Message, uh, go back the other way. The dog is completely. There. That's a lot better. Just with that nylon collar. We use a nylon collar. All right. Turn. Make him sit. It was that simple. Nylon. Just lift up. Push down on his butt. There, now and make him lay down in this way. Body language. He's doing and good. To the head halter. He's not pulling anymore. To manage the dog. First we taught the dog not to right pull. There. Then we go to the head halter. Keep walking. Go ahead, that. Debbie. I want to take it a direction. step further because this is a German Shepherd. Pull, but don't jerk. Do all right, all turn right there. Teach the dog. Michelle, just the make the him sit right there. That you can follow through don't, from yep, a distance. No, yeah, try not to and jerk on it. And we as humans have to resist jerking. It's easy for us to do it because we have something in our hand. But it took me about five years to not jerk. It, it, it's not something you learn right away. Andrea, thanks for watching. Tina Phillips. Hey, thank you, Tina. I had somebody in the yesterday that you referred me. I appreciate that. Uh, and Bobby's uh, having terrible time with Finnegan pulling help. Yes, so go back to my replay, Tina, and go back, and you probably need to do a little bit more off-leash before you put anything around her neck. Now, before I forget, people, when I go to the head halter, this is extremely important. This could either make it or break it with some dogs. When you go to the head halter, okay, you still have to remove anything around their neck. You still have to remove everything around their neck. Why is that? Because if you have something around their neck, they're still, their brain's still going to resist it. So they'll still pull. So Kelly, Kelly Klein, you could be still doing that. So to go to a controlled area, Kelly, well, a fenced in controlled area, and just a head halter, nothing on his neck. And same with you, Tina. If you have even, even a, a, a collar that has the, uh, the uh, tags on it, that and their brain could automatically tell them to pull. So remove everything around their neck, just a head halter, and see how it goes from there. All right? Here's, here's a husky. You're holding Came her back pretty harness. good, huh? Oh, yeah. Came in with a harness. Of course. All right, turn. You ready, it's Shannon? Pull. Their brain right, tells them up. to pull. It's Can't a husky. Right. And you just walk with her. I went to a nylon. It's on there. And then we did turn. off leash. Like the other yes, way. you can do off leash with huskies. Yes, you can do off leash you outside with huskies. You bet you can. You just, and I got proof. Go. So, anyways, so you go to the head nice, holder. Nice. You got now, your hand on the now, so that's perfect. We'll resist it because it's pulling is that? pulling. And there's that's none. some resistance. And that's what you want. Now, what you, you want don't no see pulling. is me giving this dog time to that's acclimate wrong. itself with yes. the head halter. There's nothing wrong with giving the dog treats when, you, when you're getting them um, acclimated to the head halter. Get them to like that head halter. Get them to love it. So that husky ended up doing off-leash outside even. Very fast learning husky. Huskies are highly intelligent. Hounds are highly intelligent. When you have a highly intelligent dog, then use a method that they don't know how to fix. So if you put a head, a halter on a husky, their brain tells them to pull, even if it's an anti-pulling harness. It won't work. It won't work. You, if it does, what they're doing is pulling really hard and you're holding back. Now, when I say it won't work, 
It won't work on companion, strong will, or dominant huskies. It will work on a sensitive, meek, fearful husky. All right? So remember, this is why you have to know the temperament of dog to determine what you're going to use. Very, very important. Uh, Rochelle, Murdoch, I said Maverick, sorry about that. He's still doing so good, no more lunging at all. Uh, us and all neighborhood bikers, thank you. You're welcome, Rochelle. What a heck of a good experience. I think Debbie was with you too. I think Debbie was with you too. Uh, Lana, thanks for watching. Tim Landis, thank you for watching. So um, let me see here, I got a question from Tamira. My dad said you worked with, the, with men at his job. He referred me to you. My puppy is eight weeks, we should start. What type of training? Uh, Tamara, um, go to my replays on Facebook. I have one on how to, how, to, how to raise a perfect puppy and how to train a puppy. All right, very important. Those two replays, and then get a hold of me for at five months for some basic obedience. Some basic obedience. Uh, can these be used for puppies or should they be a little older? Oh, very good question, Joe. Very good question, Joe. So these methods that I have here that I'm using, try to use them with dogs five months or older. Don't go right, don't go to a 12-week-old puppy and, and, and go to a, a nylon, a nylon. No, 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 no. Remember, if you go to my, if you go back to my puppy um, replay, I don't use anything around their neck. I use a harness even, all right? And then just train them with treats. Good question. Um, let, me, let me show you with a dog. Oops. Uh, let me see if I hit this just right. There you go. A boxer. Keep coming this, this is way. similar to a pit bull. Just this is just. Loose, loose lead. Just. This is uh, Josh, his name is. This is just the um, star mark, and that's it. Just turn that's right it. by the footprints the and make him sit. That's all, that's all it has. Oh, yeah. That's a lot better. Just the star mark. The dog shakes it off. So you have just the star mark on the dog. No, because you can't put a head halter on it, but the dog's not pulling. It's up high over the Adam's apple, behind the ears, and you're not jerking. The dog teaches himself not to pull. That's it. And then we resist, as human beings, resist jerking. So I tell him to lift up, push down on his butt, nice and slow, nothing dynamic. Dog's mouth is open, you got normal body language, and that's what you want. This is why it's important to know body language, so you can ascertain what the dog is thinking. So you can ascertain what the dog is thinking. Uh, hold on here. I got some more questions here. Gloria, thank you for watching. Uh, Joe Henderson, thank you, for, uh, thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, again, let me know. All right, let me show you a, uh, let me see here. Where is that dog that I really want to show you here? Mm. So I used, I had halter for this gentleman, older gentleman, right hands there. were fragile. Now you can make I did sit. off leash first, sit. then we went to the head halter. Right. Then we went to the head halter to huh. get him, huh. and then he can actually enjoy his dog. He can actually enjoy his dog. This dog was causing havoc in his house. He can actually enjoy it. All right, let me uh, see. Back and forth with him a little bit. I want to look at his body a language. Pomsky. Oh man, he is come just. A Pomeranian. Hard to do it with a harness, mix. isn't it? Heather yep, just come back this dog. way. Just I think, real quick. I think just if really I remember that your name was Heather, don't get mad if I forget. Uh, but I think uh, it was. walk right inside. That's so, right. And then straight to this those dog steps with over a harness. There. Keep him right next to you the best you can. He's got more husky. Highly intelligent dog. All right, and bring him right back over here. So what we did with 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 this dog. I don't remember the it's dog. Hard to just keep him next to you. More than the dog. All you right, know, and then you have guys, you guys have to understand. Uh -huh. um, in in my line of work, I I love people more than dogs. Um, I love helping people more, uh, a lot more. So, anyway, so we went right to the head halter from there, and then we stopped the pulling. So we did. We 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 adjusted to get him not to pull with the nylon. Then we did off leash. Then we did head halter. The this dog was way too highly intelligent for even it kind of got me a few times i'll tell you what by the time i got done training that dog i honestly had a headache i had a headache because i was overthinking everything and i like challenges like that this is why i only do two dogs now let's go back to what i talked to you about about the star mark this 
strong-willed dogs, some companion dogs, strong-willed dogs, and even dangerous dogs. You teach them not to pull. Here's why it works simultaneously. You want to teach the dog not to pull as a consequence. Now, if they learn the consequences themselves, they got it. They're gonna, it's gonna stay with them forever. It's gotta connect though. Let me make a parallel here. It has to connect. The correction has to connect with the behavior. Does that make sense? The connection has to make, make with the behavior. I call it the porcupine response, all right? A, a meek, sensitive, and fearful dog. If it gets nailed by a porcupine when it's a puppy or when it's older, you think it's gonna come near a porcupine again for the rest of its life? Hell no, hell no. It's gonna avoid porcupines. Why? Because it learned a lesson during that time. Now, let's talk about companion, strong will, and dangerous dogs. If they get nailed by a porcupine, guess what they do? They fight back, they go after it, and they take risk. I'm gonna keep winning, I'm gonna keep winning. This is why you have these dogs with tons of, qu of, of quills on their face, because they keep taking the risk. They, they do the same thing with the pinch collar. They do the same thing with the pinch collar. They'll put it on and you jerk, 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 and they keep taking risk, they keep taking risk. It doesn't work. This is, I try to, I only mention the porcupine response when I do a huge, huge seminar with a couple hundred people and trainers, just because I have more time. But understand it, it's very important how different dogs and different temperaments think. And this is why you use different methods. You don't want to be married to just one method. All right? Now, I even, when I teach parents, when parents ask me, does this work on kids too? I said, listen, you have to make the correction, the consequence, the same as the behavior. So if they're, if they're doing something wrong and you take their TV away, they're not going to get the connection. You have, to make the, you have to make the connection. That's the parallel that I make. You've got to make the connection. That's long-term. And they learn it themselves. That's the amazing part. Dogs learn it themselves and people learn it themselves. I'm driving and I'm speeding and I get a ticket. I learned that my speeding got me the ticket. The officer's not going to tell me I'm going to take your TV away because you sped. There's no connection there. All right, this is why we don't like the police sometimes because we don't want to be held responsible for our own actions. <laughs> and you have risk takers who will go out there and take risk and get caught again and get caught again. You don't want that. Just that alone can tell you what kind of personality you have. All right, all right, uh, let's see here. Dobie is uh, doing much better now. Good, Heather, outstanding. That's what I want to hear. Uh, Steve Payne. Uh, what do you do for a Rottweiler who is strong will and locks on his on his uh, leash and wants to play tug of war? Um, I, on Steve, on dogs like that, I start with the star mark to teach him not to pull. If if this doesn't work and and the stress of the collar elevates him to want to bite and play tug of war because their brain tells them that when they feel stressed to bite something then you don't have a choice but to go off leash with me first, all right? Then you go off leash, then we go back to the head halter. So you're gonna have to go to off leash and then that. So there, th this only works on certain dogs. If you get a dog who has learned to outsmart you and stop you by playing with the leash or even going after your feet or maybe just uh, resisting the, cor the correction, you have to be able to, as a man, if you're a trainer and you're a man, you have to be able to stop yourself from continually jerking and go to another method. Even, even, and you may not want to hear this, even if you go to the shock collar to get him to stop pulling, and then, and then go to the head halter, and then remove the shock collar and teach him not to pull. That's worst case scenario. But I wouldn't do that with your Rottweiler. I wouldn't do that with your Rottweiler, Steve. Uh, Marissa. My dog's a boxer German Shepherd mix. The head harness has my dog throwing himself on the ground and won't even walk with, uh, yes. Okay, so what I would do, Marissa, I would go to the head halter, Marissa. The, uh, excuse me, not the head halter, the star mark. What the star mark does, uh, Marissa, what it does is when he stops in protest, that's called protesting. He lays down and stops protesting this. What this does, it will correct them all the way around the neck 
And then he has to go forward. All right? He has to go forward because he's getting corrected. He's getting corrected. So he has to go forward. Parallels, Amanda. So that happened a little bit with this golden retriever. Very good golden retriever. Man, I tell you yes, what. Yes, I'll if teach I, you. If I, had, if I wanted a golden retriever, it, it'd come out of this, uh, this breed. Extremely well, that's because we lead with emotions. Dog. Dogs lead with instinct. Uh, we found out All right, turn. You're going to make her sit. Like other dogs near him. And my guess is and just make her do it. With a bunch of other dogs. Yeah. And he just demanded and then his D -O -W -N. for a while. And then it just yeah. elevated. But anyways, Straight down with your left to, uh, hand. A star mark. Don't, don't have to make her sit. Hard. Just follow so through. To a star mark, so he stopped pulling keep going. Keep going. You're going to feel a little pressure. And then we, and then that's we all it a takes. Bit of, it's easy. Uh, what I call the pressure down. And that's going to be my third show from here. Uh, it's called the pressure down. That one's extremely important for aggressive and crazy dogs, especially for your dog, Steve, when we get to that. It's going to be really important to, to know that, to know that method. Uh, let's see here. So I hope that makes sense, uh, Marissa. I'll go right to the, to the star mark, Marissa. Uh, Sherry, uh, you should mention that you sell those collars. Well, I'm glad you said that, Sherry. What I want you to do is I, I really like Joey's Pet Outfitters. He has all the stuff that I'm telling you about. Uh, he's in Williamston. I put his website on my thread. Uh, it's one of the first things I posted. So um, Joey's Outfitters, I know you can call around and go to other places, but some of the people, they don't have time to go look or they don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you go to Mark, he knows. Mark's the owner of uh, uh, Joey's Outfitters. I'm not getting any kickback from Mark. I'm not getting anything from him. I just happen to like the guy, and I happen to like his, his store, although I need to go more, more often there. But he has all the equipment there. Um, okay, Kelly Klein, Cash does this the same, throws himself on the ground. Yes, so star mark, uh, uh, Kelly. But again, do more off-leash, Kelly, before you do any pressure on his neck. When you go to the head halter, take everything off their neck so their brain doesn't still tell them to pull. My guess is a lot of people are still doing that, all right? Debbie Lawrence, thanks for watching. Uh, tell your, uh, your husband, Brian, I said hi. It's been a while. Uh, Sarah, thank you for watching. I'm glad you're watching, Sarah. Uh, Sherry, thank you. You got a question, Sherry, feel free to ask, okay? George, same with you, George. Don't hesitate, you guys. Uh, don't, uh, let me make sure I got everybody here. Uh, Alicia Reagan, thank you for watching. Uh, you, you have a job, Alicia, where you walk dogs a lot, and you want to be able to um, have these owners go back to my replay and watch this so they can teach your dogs not to pull so you don't have to. You may not have time to do this. Or even, or, or you have a dog who, who needs more work than the average dog. So maybe they can do it, and then you can do it too at the same time. So I hope, I hope that's coming together for you guys. Uh, let's see here. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, Charlie. Mark is great, too, with food recommendations. Ah, very. Yeah, that's true, uh, Charlie. I mentioned that on one of my replays, Charlie. Uh, he's the one who got me to switch over to another food. Uh, just by his expression in his face, he, I knew I was feeding the wrong food. Uh, that's not my field of study. I give it to people who know what they're talking about. Uh, Sarah Pratt, thank you for watching. Uh, how do you apply this method uh, to the hubs? You Oh, with the hubs, it's different, Sarah. They learn through love. <laughs> husbands learn through love, all right? And then husbands have to do the opposite with your wives, right? Uh, that's another topic. I'm just learning that, believe it or not. I'm just learning both. Uh, so anyways, so flat-nosed dogs, a lot of the times I do off-leash first, then I'll go to star mark. Why do I go to a star mark? Because I can't go to the head halter, and I'd be damned if I go to a choke chain or a nylon choke chain around their neck because you could pop their blood vessels or disrupt their breathing. If it's low or sensitive or meek, any dog, doesn't matter, I go to the harness. That's okay to go to a harness on a low, sensitive, meek dog. If it's a companion or if it's a strong-willed dog and you go to the harness, they're gonna pull. If they pull or you just, you're happy with using that, understand, in time, they're gonna develop stress around their back, shoulders, and back. As, uh, when I say back, I mean their last rib to their to their um, their hindquarter. If you use the head, if you use the uh, the chest, the anti-pulling harness, and they're still pulling, you're gonna have to massage that area. If you don't, you're gonna have issues when they get older. 
You don't want them to ish. You want them to be happy. If you don't believe me, go to their body language to determine whether they're happy or not. Is their mouth closed all the time? Are they relieving stress? Do they have a hard time stretching when they get up in the morning? Do they have, do they have a hard time stretching when they get up, period? Then that tells you that your harness is not working. It's causing more damage than you, than you think just because you don't want to put anything around their neck to get them to stop pulling. All right, their neck is full of muscle, but you're not going to be married to anything that you have. Remember that. You're going to be not going to be married to anything that you have. The pinch collar, the metal pinch collar, just because I know there's three different countries that listen to my replay, um, understand that it's illegal in Australia. All right, I talked to a trainer in Melbourne the, uh, was it last month. Um, very important. It is illegal in certain countries. Austria, it's illegal. And let me see what I got written down. Austria and Switzerland, the pinch collars are illegal. In Australia, it's illegal to import them, but not illegal to use them, except Victoria. So understand in different parts of the country, figure out what your laws are when it comes to some of these training things. Um, of course, off-leash is easy. Off-leash is easy. You don't have to worry about nothing. Will I do an off-leash um, Will I do an off -leash show one day? Um, I'm really reluctant to do one, but I probably will um, next year. I got to collect a lot of videos. I'm working on making different videos right now on sensitive dog, meat dog. Uh, you heard somebody say the dog was really good with the bean bag. I'll, I'll qualify that more in my off leash. Um, or you'll hear somebody say tape and I'll qualify that. My goal is to not have anything on my dog's neck or chest, nothing. Complete verbal control, complete control. So Steve, when I get a dog who protests like that and fights and fights, most likely he's strong-willed, I go right to off-leash because it makes him submissive, and then I go to the head halter, all right? Then I go to the head halter, all right? Let's see here who I got here. Tanya, thanks for watching. Uh, Charlie, my boy Sully, does well on pavement in the gentle leader, but in the minute we, we get near the grass, Yes, well, you see what I mean? It's instinct. He's a hound. That's when I tell people, uh, Charlie, when I tell people, listen, why do dogs pull? Because it's in obedience is not instinct. They're just going to resist. They're just going to go forward. So especially when you have a hound or a husky, even with the head halter, they could still pull. This is why you want to do so much off leash first, then go to on lead. All right. Very important. I think I mentioned that with Kelly. Nicole, thanks for watching. Nicole's got two great dogs. One's got a little bit of a personality quirk, just like all of us do. But man, her other one, man, it's awesome. Husky Shepherd mix. Um, I sh next time, in good weather, I want to videotape it just so you guys see how good the dog is. Uh, let's see here. Jeff came to me last week with a shepherd. Um, I got to post that video. I think I did post it on my Facebook. You guys got to see that video. That video was really good off lead. Uh, very important. I used to um, I used to do every video or everyone that comes to me make a video and post it time and circumstances just doesn't allow me to do that anymore. But I will I will cherry pick some videos and put them up. Um, if you want to uh, if I send them to you, there's no you know, nothing says that you can't post them on my page or on your page. I'm, I'm OK with that. OK, so it's, it's I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, let's see here. So let me make sure I got everything. I talked about why it's important to correct a dog in the moment that they're pulling so they learn it long term. Okay, that way they make a connection with what they're doing wrong. Very important. So as they're forging ahead, they self-correct themselves. They self-teach themselves not to do it. I did that with, um, with almost every dog that I had, that I had on there. Uh, let me see. I, I right have next a to her. On here. Oh, Just here like that. So I used a yeah. nylon. Keep her, keep her. On the at least dough. she's not pulling. She's ahead silent of you, but she's not correction. pulling. You want? I used a silent correction. It didn't. Just like the Rottweiler, it doesn't want to go. So it's coming with me. It's coming with me. I bring it up to me very gently, and then make it sit. It goes up over their Adam's apple, behind their ears. The dog's mouth is closed. He's not happy about it. Look when we go to the head halter. Now his mouth is open. Now he's happy. But we had to teach him not to pull first. And then we went to this. All right. That strap, when you put it on, goes over their ears so it doesn't come off. And it goes on tight. It does not go on loose. 
It does not go on loose. It goes on tight up there. This owner knew more about the dog than the vet that she took it to. It, this owner is very sharp on her dog. She kind of knew already. Now, this dog came to me with a pinch collar, but it was still pulling. So it had stress back here. Same with the harness. If it's still pulling, you got to massage the dog, even if you go to the head halter. Don't ignore that. Don't ignore the tension that goes through their body, people. Don't ignore it. You ignore it, it's going to accumulate and it's going to go. It's going to go. You don't want that. Andrea, thanks for watching. I hope that makes sense. Let me make sure if I have another one um, to put on there. Don't Hello, know. Amanda. I did that one already. I did that one already. I got to make sure I do. I do all of them. Ah, here's one. This was a little tough dog. So, as you know, she's got a pinch collar on the dog right now. And you can see the pinch collar on the dog. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right, I, I, I muted both. That's what you said. All right, so make sure that you don't go, you, you make a fast windmill, you make a fast windmill to stop, to stop the, uh, the dog from coming at you. You have the, the, the walking stick going back and forth. I'm back on, Gay, I'm back on. Uh, what? Where was it muted? Can anybody tell me? That way I can go back and discuss what I talked about. Uh, I think I was muted on the, um, when I was doing this dog here. I think I was muted here. If I was muted here, what I was talking about is the pinch collar. Um, I, was, I was talking about the pinch collar and then when we took the, the, um, the collar off its head, what happened then is I saw subtle change in the dog. The dog didn't want to pull anymore. Oh, it was the windmill. Okay. Okay, that, so that's good. Thanks, Nicole. So let me review this. I'm looking for subtle changes when I get a dog like this. All right, I'm looking for subtle changes. So once we remove the flat collar, it still had a pinch collar on. Once we remove the flat collar, then the dog, then the dog stopped pulling so much. So then we went to the head halter. Then we went to the head halter. There is some adjustment that the dog has to go through. I mean, you're actually taking their, their main line of defense away. It's like putting handcuffs on somebody. So understand that you're gonna have to do one or the other. Take the flat collar off a dog when you start training it with the head halter, 
to, to remove that mental resistance that they have. So take it off of there. Please remind me when the proper timing to say the word heal is when the leash is relaxed. Uh, Christian, remember, the, the main line of communication for a dog is body language. So the fact that you reinforce it is fine, but you raise a good question um, that I didn't mention. I want to use heal as soon as I make the dog start the healing process. Now, healing means their head at your heel. All right, so I'm gonna say heel when the dog's head is at my heel. A lot of times people want to say heel to get the dog back to them. When you when you do that, you teach the dog that heel means to get in front of you and then go back. So only say the word when the dog is where you want it to be. If the dog's ahead of you, you can just pull it back or make the dog go back to you. When the dog is to you, then you say heel. Or you get a battle of wills. Or you get a battle of wills. I appreciate you mention that, Christian. I forgot from the beginning to, to uh, throw that word heel in. So I appreciate that. Even after all this information, you got, yeah, I forget something. So uh, that's good. I appreciate that. Uh, let me make sure that, um, let me make sure that I don't forget anything. So again, the head halter are designed not to pull. It's a, it's a habit that you're designing not to pull. Uh, low, meek, or sensitive dogs, treats, try to shy away from the harness because they're not going to overcome what they're afraid of or what they're shy of. They're able to resist it and walk back. You create avoidance that way. Use a head halter for them anyways. Teach them they have to go forward. They have to go forward. Uh, remember, play appeases their instinct, not walking. Play is much more important. Play in a way that compliments their instinct. Walking's great. Walking's fantastic to get out there with your dog. Get them, get, maybe get them to use the bathroom if you're living in an apartment, or maybe just to get out. But don't use that as a source of getting your dog appeased to relieve instinct. Make sure, make sure you still appease their instincts with a game. Uh, thanks for coming back, Heather. Rochelle, thank you for explaining that. You're welcome, uh, Rochelle. Uh, right after the Dolby. Good. All right. Let me make sure I got everybody's question here. Charlie, we want we want to come back with you when he, when he's done recovering from his surgery. Yes, yes, Charlie, come back, come back. Great information. You're welcome, Gay. I'm not married to just one method. Think about the training the training temperaments that we talked about. The dog, the, the, the breed of the dog that you have, temperament, breed, uh, all those are designed to teach you as a trainer what method to use. Your ultimate goal is complete off leash. You don't want to be married to just any collar. I see dogs who've been walking on pinch collars for years. I'm like, really? Years? When are you going to decide to do off leash? I mean, how much, how much, tr how much pressure does a dog have on their neck? At least massage the dog, people. How much stress do they have? Years of training with a pinch or a shock collar, and you haven't decompressed them. But I go to this instead of the pinch, so it's silent, correction, up high over the Adam's apple, and head halter to teach them not to pull through habit. It goes over their muzzle. There's a padded part. It goes over their muzzle behind their neck, and then the leash attaches to the bottom ring. When they plunge forward, their head comes down. All right, very important. Martingale or a nylon for sensitive or meek dogs. Sensitive or meek dogs or just treats in general, you guys. Just treats in general to get them to stop pulling and then go to the head halter. Here's what I see. This is what I see, especially in Michigan. I see trainers go to treat method and they go right to the shot collar. Treats, shot collar. That's what they do. There's no in between. And you want to use something like a head halter to go in between. You go right to the shock collar, you're adding stress. The trainers who do have dogs that are like that, you can see their neck and shoulders. They haven't decompressed them. They got to relax them. It's very important. So my, I might say something to them if they're open to suggestions about, hey, you know what? You, you got an excellent trained dog. He's young, but I foresee problems if you don't relax their neck and shoulders. 
Sometimes they reject it. Sometimes they'll say thank you. Sometimes they give me the finger. I don't care. As long as I say it, it doesn't matter. When the dog's five or six, maybe they'll reflect, and maybe, he, maybe Hector was right, and maybe they'll do it. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for their dog, all right? And then maybe it'll connect with them. And then hopefully they can see me make a mistake and say something to me. I don't know everything. I just know a lot. And that we're supposed to learn from each other, not, not be in competition with each other. We're supposed to learn from each other. And then, and, and then also as trainers, we're not supposed to be married to just one method. There's a variety of methods that are out there. And again, if you have any questions about my methods, they're not, they're not, they're not thought experiments, people. You can see some of these videos. You can see the testimonies that I have on Google Review. You can see the videos that I post, so you can see that. You can see that some of these dogs come in very aggressive, and I need to make them submissive, especially not with hands. So very important. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if Lily reacts to a dog walking too close and can't distance myself on a trail and see the dog reactive too, should it be? Yes, you should walk the other way, Nicole, because your worst enemy is going to be an untrained dog. I got to hold on because I'm getting a call right now and I can't see the rest of your message. But it's very important that you're going to under anybody, anybody listening right now, your worst enemy is going to be an untrained dog. Your worst enemy is going to be an untrained dog. Uh, should we just walk through it or I'm supposed to sit down and, and let them pass? Um, if the dog is really reactive and you're restricted to that area, Nicole, be careful because that dog could lunge and still bite your dog. And, and then if your dog retaliates your, and your dog causes more damage, your dog is going to look like the bad guy. So it's best, it's best to control the area and either walk the other way to an area where you can back away and then have them cross. Um, or or you can, if you can bypass them on a shorter lead, you can do that too. Some dogs are not aggressive. They just have a personal space. That personal space could have been developed uh, by, a, by a dog attack, by an emotional traumatic event, by, a, by an untrained dog who's a bully. So, yeah, manage that. Very good. Very good. Uh, Heather, uh, Nicole, Inger, good question. I tried both with a small dog. Can't usually get them to stay quiet, polite. Uh, yeah, small dogs have a, have a little bit of a disadvantage, Heather, because you can't put anything around their muzzle. You know, it, it, but remember, walking them is great for them. So a harness is good. Um, you can also try different harnesses with the small dogs. And even, and even so much where I, you could even just pick your dog up because that dog could just lean over and just nail your small dog. Just pick them up, walk the other way, or, or, or turn and, and walk the other way. Um, but remember, you have the leash windmill and you have, your, um, you have your walking stick. You have your walking cane with you too. Just, just never know. And tell the owner what you want. There is a, there is a time, just did, last week I'm out running and the owner's with their dog and the dog's lunging at me. I mean, really? I mean, grab your dog, get your dog. And then they get mad when you have to defend yourself. So you might have to be careful doing it because some people take offense to it. But, but for the most part, you out there to protect yourself. Uh, Charlie, not comfortable with my hound off leash unless, yes, yes, I, I have no problem with that, Charlie. He will hit nice in, in class off. Then, then keep doing that, Charlie. Don't set yourself up to fail. Every dog has a weakness. Every dog has a threshold. Hell, every person has a threshold, has a weakness. Charlie, we can't have perfection. I know my dog's weaknesses, and he's very well trained. I know his threshold. I know there's, he can only have like 10 or 15 kids around him. After that, he starts to shut down and get stressed. So then I pull the kids away. I reset them, do a few tricks, and then bring them back. But if I didn't read my dog's body language, something could happen. So you do that. I'm getting another call, so I can't see. If I put it on airplane, then I can't see my Facebook. So I have to bear with the calls that I get sometimes. So let me, um, I'm going a little bit over, but I don't, I don't mind that. Let's see if I got any more questions. Um, hopefully I didn't miss any questions, you guys. Uh, if I missed a question, come back to me. Uh, next week, listen to this. Next week is going to be about dog parks. I'm going to talk about things you should know at dog parks. So very important. I'm going to teach you body language again on what mutual play looks like. I'm going to teach you what bully play looks like. I'm going to teach you what dangerous dog body language is. It is very important to know this. Don't assume that the owners know that their dogs are just, just playing. 
All right, their dog could be a bully setting your dog up to fail and them not knowing. I can't tell you how many calls I get in the spring, summer, and fall about damages that another dog created at a dog park. You got a property crime there. Sometimes your homeowner's insurance will get it. Sometimes you pay out of pocket. So very important, you guys, dog park. And that's going to be because of Mike Devlin from Meridian Township Parks and Recreation. Mike Devlin suggested that because they opened up their parks. If I could do a, if I could do a, uh, a session on that, I said, absolutely, Mike. Mike's like my brother. So I, I, t I totally. Next week, dog parks. Try not to forget. Can you please touch on jumping up at some point? Oh, good question, Kristen. Um, yes, that's going to be after my, my down command. Um, so I got dog parks next. I'm going to be doing some tricks to teach people how to do tricks. Pressure down, the stay, and the off command. Now, Kristen, go back to my uh, website. I have two flyers on how to teach a dog not to jump. Prevent a dog from jumping and stop a dog from jumping. That will help you. Uh, in addition to avoid direct attention to a toy. Uh, send me a message, uh, Kristen, and qualify that a little bit more. Okay? I'm a little confused. Introducing other family dogs. Um, Vicki, that's on. I have a flyer on my website on how to introduce two dogs. Read that. If, it's, if you think... If you think it's still confusing and I need to make a show, I will, you guys. No problem with that, okay? But go back to my website. It has a tremendous amount of tips on there to, to help you. All right, uh, so Christian, remember, go back to my uh, website and look for that. Uh, let's see, you're not comfortable with, okay. You're welcome, Vicki. You are welcome. So next week, next week, it's going to be about dog parks. Might go a little over, but it's merited. I'm hoping that anybody who wants to take their dog to the dog park, they can determine whether their dog is good enough to go to the dog park. Um, or if you go to the dog park, what, what are some flags, what are some red flag dogs that you don't want to be around your dog? And maybe you should just leave. Maybe you should just leave, all right? Um, or maybe you should stay, and maybe you should tell the owner, hey, watch uh, Hector on first class dog training uh, replay on dog parks. Very informative, it should help you. Uh, maybe they don't know. Maybe their dog need to be trained. Maybe not my method, just trained in general. I don't know, and then maybe a trainer can help me, I don't know how to teach boundaries with treats because dogs are not moral creatures. I don't know, all right? Boundaries are set, are set through, through trial and error, through correction, through uh, discomfort, all right? Now, you could make it look like it's, a, it's boundaries with a treat, but that's mechanical. I needed to stick. Yesterday, I had a 12-week-old puppy who just walked up, to, walked up the dogs, and that was dangerous. That dog could get injured. Now, you're thinking, well, they should manage the puppy a little better. You know what? There's times when you can't. There's times you're, you can't be 100%, all right? So, very important. What about day, uh, daycares? That would apply also to dog parks, uh, Charlie. Very good. That would apply. Nicole. Heather Vega, mine started great, but when other dogs react first. Okay, good, good. I thank you for helping her out, Nicole. Janice, the crappy part is where we live. The dogs have to be on a leash. Yeah, that's, that is difficult, uh, Janice. It, it, um, this, it's hard to find a, a closed area sometimes where you can actually let your dog roam free. Uh, it it is, makes, it, makes it difficult. Uh, but I still need to go over dog parks. Uh, do you mean... Do you mean, Janice, dog parks, you have to have, they still have to be on a leash inside the dog park? If that's the case, that's kind of that's weird. That kind of defeats the purpose of having the dog park. Um, I know some dog parks don't like collars around their neck um, because while they're playing, the jaws can get caught on their neck. But I've never heard one about the leash. Uh, bully dog play. Do you have a video of Emmy? Ah, Janice, you remember Emmy. Uh, yeah, I don't have one, but we have to address bully dog play because some dogs don't like to be bullied. They, they retaliate, and they often we think the dog that retaliates, it's the bad guy. It's not. It's the bully. But then a lot of people don't know what a bully, what the body language of a bully is. All right. All right. So going into my next show, I got a, uh, a lunch date with my daughter, Brianna, that I have to make. 
<laughs> I have to make my, my awesome golden rose, I call her. So, very important. I appreciate everybody for watching today. Great show on teaching the dogs not to pull. Go back to my replay and watch in the beginning how I qualify, what I use, for what temperament of dog that I use. If you have any constructive criticism, give it to me. Give it to me. I appreciate that. I don't know everything. I know a lot. We're going to see you next week about dog parks. Next week, dog parks. The following week, dog tricks. If you have any suggestions on dog tricks, let me know. I'm going to teach center. I'm going to teach back. I'm going to teach shake, roll over, speak. Those are the ones that I'm going to talk about right now. So look for it in two weeks, that one. And then the dog park one. If you don't have any other questions, you guys were fantastic today. Great questions. I learned a lot. I learned a tremendous amount. Kristen corrected me on making sure I gave that word heal. Probably the most important thing I should have said from the beginning that because I'm overthinking, I forget it. So I'm glad you guys were interactive and you got with me. I hope to see you guys again next week. And if you have any questions, let me know. Please have a good week. I love everybody who comes and watches me. Thank you very much. Have a great week, everybody. Have a great week.